Welcome to XR Motion. Today, we are going to be learning how to make groundbreaking AI animations. To show us how it's done, we have with us the amazing Lyle Hintz. Enjoy. All right, hey everyone, let's get started. First off, you'll need a Google account and a Hugging Face account, so go ahead and create those if you don't already have them. The key to making these AI-generated animations is an open-sourced text-to-image model called Stable Diffusion that was just released a few weeks ago by Stability AI. In order to run this model, we are going to be using Google Colab, which is like Google Docs, but for running code. Thank you to DeForum for creating the notebook we are going to be using today. Version 4 of this notebook just came out this week, and we will have that link in the description, but check their Twitter for the most up-to-date notebook. After we have the Deform Stable Diffusion Notebook open, we want to create our own copy and save it to our drive. So at the top left, click Copy to Drive. This should open a duplicate in a new tab and you can go ahead and close the original. Now the notebook is stored in your Google Drive and that's how you will access it in the future. All right, let's get this GPU up and running. You want to hit Connect right at the top right. If this is the first time you're using a Google Colab Notebook, you're probably going to get this CAPTCHA. Just answer honestly. And when you see the green check mark here at the top right, you know you're connected. Colab notebooks are divided into cells that you run individually. This first cell will tell you which GPU you're connected to. Hit this little play button, and we got a Tesla T4. Very nice. Scroll down a little bit and run model and output paths. You're going to get another pop up asking for read and write access to your drive. Hit connect to drive, pick your account, and hit allow if you would like your outputs to be saved to your Google Drive. After a few moments, this cell will create a folder in your Google Drive called AI, which will be the base folder for the notebook. For the next step, we will download the weights from Hugging Face and upload them to this folder inside AI called Models. Now you're going to want to open the Hugging Face link in the description below. You will see a screen like this if you haven't accessed them before. It's going to have you log in, do so, and then hit Access Repository. It will take you to this page and then click here to download the weights to your computer. The file should be about 4 gigs, and once you have that downloaded, upload it to the Google Drive folder called Models. This is definitely the longest portion of the setup, but you only have to do it the first time that you set up the notebook. It should take 15 to 20 minutes or even longer, but with the power of editing, we're done. Continuing our setup, we're going back to the Deform notebook, scrolling down a little bit, and clicking the next cell, Setup Environment. As far as I know. The setup environment cell should take about 50 seconds, and once the green check mark appears, you know the cell has executed. And we're almost done now with the setup section, only two cells left. You want to run Python definitions, this should take about 5 seconds. After that, hit select and load model. This cell should run for about 3 minutes, probably. And it won't seem like anything is happening at first, but trust me it is. The bar down here at the bottom will show you if anything is running throughout the whole notebook. Once we get a green check mark next to Select and Load Model, we know we are fully set up. Moving down to Animation Settings. Animation Settings set the camera mode of the run as well as the camera movements, which you are able to keyframe, by the way. For Animation Mode, let's select 3D. When we select 3D, we aren't actually rendering 3D geometry, but instead controlling a camera looking at our image that can move in three dimensions. 2D Mode only operates in two dimensions, X and Y, and uses angle and zoom. Just so you know, when we're in 3D mode, angle and zoom do nothing, so you can leave them at their default values and it won't change the animation. Max frames is the total length in frames. The notebook will generate this number of frames unless something interrupts it. I'm going to type in 300, which is going for a 20 second animation at 15 frames per second. The motion parameters are a bit more complicated, and trust me, you can spend all day tweaking these, but for this video, let's go with something nice and simple to start with. I'm going to keep Translation X at default, Translation Y, move it up to 2, move Translation Z, which is zoom, down to 6. For 3D rotation in X, we're going to keep it as is, 3D rotation in Y, let's go 0.3, and 3D rotation Z, 0.2. The last thing we're going to change under animation settings is the padding mode to reflection. For this tutorial, we're not going to touch any of the other settings, but make sure you go up and run the animation cell so the notebook can record all the changes that we have just made. 
You have to do that each time you tweak a parameter within a cell or else you won't get what you want. So moving down to prompts. This is probably what will feel the most familiar to anyone who has used other text to image generators. These first prompts are for the none mode under animation mode, so you can ignore them for now. We're in 3D mode, so we want to change the animation prompts. The prompt keyframe formatting is important so the notebook knows how to read them. So make sure you only change what is in the quotes here and the keyframe numbers themselves. So uh, let's change up these default settings. Instead of a beautiful apple trending on ArtStation, you can say a beautiful Rick Sanchez trending on ArtStation. The prompt format is similar to the keyframe format. The first frame, which is frame zero, will generate a prompt, a beautiful Rick Sanchez trending on ArtStation. And once it hits 20, it will cue the prompt, a beautiful banana trending on ArtStation. You can add or delete as many keyframes as you like. And if you only want one prompt, just leave keyframe zero. You can do this by deleting the lines themselves or commenting them out and ignoring the prompts. I'm going to leave it at just one prompt for now to keep it simple. But instead, I'm going to add a little bit more and change it to a hyper-realistic Rick Sanchez. And I don't want it to be trending on ArtStation, but instead I want it to be a 3D render that is cinematic with a space background. I believe that will be perfect. And make sure you run the cell so the notebook records the changes. Now moving on to the run setting. Almost there. The first thing you want to set is your image resolution. The default 512 by 512 is great and shouldn't put you at risk for running out of RAM on your graphics card. Keep in mind, you do have to keep the resolution at an increment of 64. So if you're going for a horizontal or vertical ratio, I've got some recommended resolutions on the screen that should run fine on the T4 or P100 GPUs. For this first run, we're gonna leave everything in sampling settings and save and display settings at default, but we're gonna change the batch name to something that makes a little more sense with our prompt. I'm going to go with Sanchez in space. Last thing is to change the seed behavior to random, which will change the seed for the noise on every frame. Now go ahead and hit run. And after a few moments, after it downloads one more model to your models folder on your Google Drive, the images should start generating. I found that using Google Colab on a Tesla T4, the first image at 50 samples takes about 15 to 20 seconds but the rest of the frame should take about five seconds. And now we have a hyper-realistic Rick Sanchez 3D render cinematic high detail spaced background. Some absolutely insane blue eyes. I, I probably could have added something like portrait or close up in the prompt to be better centered around his face, but I'm gonna let this one run and see how the animation looks. And that's about it for this simple first breakdown. At this point, your AI-generated frames are being saved to your Google Drive in the batch folder, and after the run is complete, you can create a video with the final cell if you uncheck Skip Video for Run All. There are tons of parameters in this notebook that will affect your final animation. My advice would be first to hone in your prompts to achieve the artistic style that you desire, then experiment with the motion parameters to get the desired camera movement you want, and then messing with settings in the run section such as sample steps, scale, seed, and resolution. I would love to see what you make using this tutorial, so please give me a follow on Instagram and Twitter. A username on those is at dot simulate. If you've got any questions about the tutorial, stable diffusion, or AI generated art in general, Feel free to put them in the comments or shoot me a message on social media and I'll try to get back to you.